Justin, just talk about last week. I mean, just all the different emotions. I mean, it's probably didn't expect something like that, I would imagine. Just coming back, playing last night. It's kind of a roller coaster of a week or what? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, um, we uh, you get done with preseason and there's certain things that may be out of your control. I know that we're trying to manage the cap as best we can. So, um, you know, that was explained to me and I understand that from a management's perspective, but it's difficult for the player for sure. Um, you know, I just want to be a part of this group and I know that I'm an NHL player, so um, that hurts. But at the same time, all you can do is uh, stay focused and be ready and uh, try to play as well as you can when you get the call. Did it catch you by surprise a little bit? I mean, was that kind of left, out of left field a little bit? Or? Uh, a little bit, but still when you're looking at it, you kind of understand that, okay, we got a couple of guys that are waiver eligible. Um, you understand that um, you kind of, you see the, you kind of read the tea leaves a little bit and you're like, this is possible, but you still, it's still a little bit shocking. I know a lot of people when they are like growing up, they don't realize the business side of the sport is so prominent. When in your career did you kind of realize how much like, the cap space and all these sorts of business decisions factor in? Uh, yeah, um, I think I'm still constantly learning kind of, you know, like um, you want, or you, there's just different situations that you find yourself in, and this would be a you know a good example. But even throughout the years, where maybe somebody else is a cap casualty, and you're like, oh wow, so that's what's going on. You kind of understand that uh, there's different things behind the scenes that need to be done. So um, yeah, I'm always I'm always learning, and like I said, when you when you kind of experience that and you see it happen, that's when you understand and you can read the tea leaves, as I said, and and kind of see all oh, this is possible, you know. Just moving forward, is it difficult to not knowing like what's going to happen, whether where you'll be here, or Grand Rapids, or, or just especially for I, I guess you have, you have family. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But again, all I can do is just try to play as well as I can, and um, you know the rest is out of my control. So as hard as that is, it's just how you got to approach it. You talked about making the most of the opportunity. How did you feel about your game last night? Yeah, I thought I played well. Um, you know, anytime you have a zero on the board for the other team, it's a good game for. Probably everybody on the team. Obviously, Talbs is really good, and he helped us out. But um, yeah, it felt good, and uh, you know, it just feels good to to be in there and uh, contributing. Did you even get down to GR? No, I'm trying to think of the timing. I mean, I was there for like 24 hours. Yeah, one practice or yeah, something. Yeah, like that. exactly. You blocked four shots yesterday, right? I don't know if the box score changed at all. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it was, but yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, how do you recover from that? From like a kind of sports science standpoint, like how do you deal with blocking that much rubber. Yeah, uh, I, I, none of the shots last night uh, hit me in a vulnerable spot. You know, I, it was, uh, none of them hurt, so that was good. But um, it's kind of funny when you're out there because you're so focused on trying to make the play and blocking the shot that even if it hurts, it still like feels good, you know? Like <laughs> mentally, you're like, okay, I did my job. But it's obviously, uh, you know, you'll have some bumps and bruises. What did you feel like went well for the PK last night? I um, thought we had good clears. I thought we were pretty good on uh, their entries. I thought we had pretty good stands in the blue line that allowed us to get pucks in the corners and clear it quickly. Um, and again, Talbs was our best player last night, so uh, he made a couple huge saves. There's a lot of defensemen in this group with a lot of experience and helping young guys like Evan Signal, Albert. Kind of what advice are the veteran guys giving to them? Yeah, I think it's just trying to be a steadying presence. Um, you know, those guys are super skilled, but like you said, uh, maybe they don't have the experience quite yet. And as you play in the league longer, you get some institutional knowledge and kind of start to sniff out situations that could be dangerous or you understand maybe time and score a little bit better and how to manage the game. So, um, like I said, they're super skilled, super talented, and they've been playing great. But um, sometimes maybe just learning from, uh, from watching some of the other guys can, can go a long way. He hasn't put so much emphasis on this first week, the first month. I mean, it's back to back against the Rangers. I mean, how do you guys, you know, what do you guys got to do against the Rangers to come out with some points here? Yeah, obviously they got a really good team. And, um, you know, it's a playoff team last year and for the last couple of years. So um, it's going to be a big challenge for us. But uh, we feel pretty confident that if we play our game the right way, um, we can play with anybody and, uh, you know, beat anybody. So. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a big challenge, but uh, with a big challenge comes a big opportunity, too. Uh, Derek, do you have an update on Fisher? 
uh, unavailable for us, probably in that day-to-day -day category uh, with an upper body. So is that going to necessitate a personnel move here? Yes, yeah, but uh, we probably have to um, do some moving around, um, potentially send someone through waivers to get a body available. Because I think both him and Petrie, uh, when I say him, Fish and Petrie, will not be uh, IR candidates. So to get an extra forward, we may play 11-7. Uh, We've got to make some decisions before... Uh, End of the day here. Who would that forward be? I'm uh, still undecided. I think it's probably a fit. What we need, uh, you know, maybe a bit being a short-term call-up might be a more veteran guy than uh, some of those young guys uh, that probably needed more significant role in Grand Rapids. Sucker for the game. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll figure that out. We want to kind of see where everything's at. You talked a little bit about the balance between kind of volume and quality defensively, but I'm curious about where you see the value in just that zone time offensively. Zone, yeah, that's a great question because, I mean, last night's a perfect example. We certainly take that game, and I know you guys, everyone's into underlying numbers now, and I'm sure you we went great to the underlying numbers, and they're pretty good for us. You know, we all chance them. Uh, you know, in our underlying numbers, we out grade A them two to one. Uh, but there was a ton of volume on shots, and obviously we had extended zone time. Um, so I th if there is that balance where you need stops, you want to lessen zone time. I think it's a little bit on both ends. It's one, on the defensive end of getting stops, but two, is spending some more time in the zone uh, with the offensive zone with the puck. And we did have some possession, and you know, it was even a point of emphasis. You could see we kind of... We rush to the slot, which is sometimes positive, but it just it, it doesn't help what we call a ground game, the ozone time. So there's a balance you're constantly, I mean, last night's a perfect example. We'll certainly take that game, uh, the way we defended, uh, the type of slot chances and great A's we gave up, but that's a hard volume game and a lot of zone time, uh, and a lot of shots against. After a defensive game like that, is there a reluctance to, to tinker with the defense and to kind of keep things as they are? No, it's a good question, and I think it's tough to move. We, the, the positive is we were happy with all six of our D last night, uh, but we're confident, obviously, uh, with Gus, who was out last night too. So you know, it's probably a decision in the morning too. Playing the Rangers here back-to-back, -back, what do you see out of that team and what's going to be the key to – I think it's got to look a little bit like last night. And when I say last night, again, I, obviously we do not want to spend the entire time in our zone as much as we did at times last night. But our attention to urgency defensively. Um, if you gave them easy offense, the type of talent they have, it could be a long night for us. You know, we limited odd man chances. We limited grade A chances last night. Uh, we limited grade A slot chances, especially five on five. Uh, it'll, it'll have to look very similar to be successful against a team like that. Um, we knew this stretch of four games was going to be extremely difficult. Uh, I think when it's all said and done, those two teams might be battling for the President's Trophy, but again, time will tell. Um, everyone has tough stretches. Um, every game in this league is extremely difficult. But those are two really special teams, and this would be a really good challenge for us. It feels like equipment has evolved so much, and shot blocks obviously aren't as dangerous as they were a while back. Guys are more willing to do them. But I'm curious, when there's 31 blocks and there's so much shot block volume, yep. do you think that's sustainable from like a, a health and <clears throat> sort of injury standpoint? Well, I, I think it was a unique game last night. So, no, probably. I don't. I don't. You just you want to limit as again. I, I can compliment our team on how many grade A looks we didn't give up, but the shot volume. I mean, you take that any time as important team. They were in the high 80s on shot attempts. They almost doubled us. Um, you know, a lot of that is they spent half a period, almost 10 full minutes, either on a goalie pull or power play, a man up, and they were chasing the game. But no, you want to limit, you know, it's that balance all the time. You appreciate the willingness to block shots, um, uh, you, you, and it really helped us last night. But if you give up volume like that, you need to block shots like that. So you, you'd like to cut down on that volume and that zone time.
like Cider has really set a physical tone in both of these first two games. What have you seen from him? And that's something you guys talked about. Of course. Well, I just sense his identity, too. Uh, emotionally engaged. Uh, he lifts our team with, with being physical, uh, getting blocks, doing hard uh, hockey against top lines. And uh, when he's at his best, it gives us a really good chance. And that's what happened last night. Two games in over the course of a long season, obviously still chemistry being worked on. Do you see that taking steps throughout practice and in the game? So yeah, long? I think so. Uh, I still think our four lines will be fluid. Uh, we even tinkered uh, with our lines from game one to game two. Obviously, we were down to 11 for most of the game last night. Uh, so you had some different combinations, which I, I thought our guys handled pretty well. Um, then, you know, probably getting someone else up to join our group. So I still think you'll see some some fluid and some, some tinkering with the lines going forward. Kind of alluded to it yesterday, Derek, but I mean, is it good on Justin Hole to stay professional the way he did Great and come back? It's, and a, it's a tough conversation. Um, I kind of waited for the dust to settle for me to get a better understanding of everything. Um, and we communicated, I just asked him to be ready. And he was great, he was professional in the, um, the conversation. And then sure enough, here we are, already game two, and we're asking a lot out of him. So um, that's really good on him, and that's, that's, that's a good sign that performed well last night. And what are his, where do you see, what's, what does he got to do to stay, what, what's his best Justin Hole? I mean, what does he do? Defending. Uh -huh. uh, I'd like to be simple and clean with the puck. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when he does that, when he's simple defending, is when he gives us a good chance, which he did last night. In your time coaching, I, I know a lot of players maybe don't understand all the sort of cap situations in the business side of hockey that kind of can dictate whether they'll be on the roster or not. When have you seen in your career guys sort of get that where it kind of clicks? With them? I think they understand it a little bit. I don't expect them to fully understand it. I don't even think our management team expects them to fully understand it, but I do think you have to communicate. Um, there's a reason why something is done. Um, I think it's just how that's just life. That's business 101. That's running any business organization, being a good communicator. So I think you have to communicate the best you can um, for them to understand. But again, it's just, you know, I have trouble understanding the cap at times. I mean, we go post game last night. We have a player potentially out, and we have two potentially out, but not an LTIR. Now it became a, a cap scenario with the options. So it's just, it's, it's a reality of it, and I think they understand it. Is that difficult to coach around when it's like you may not have the, not to say best available player, but like you have Yeah, it's a reality of it. That's, that's today's cap, that's today's NHL. All 32 teams are dealing with it. I wasn't sure if you brought it up or not, but goaltending Talbot, or are you just not No, sure? undecided. Okay. Obviously Talbot, uh, there was a lot of volume last night. Yeah. And he had some volume against Pittsburgh, too. Uh, so, um, you know, that's three games in six days. Uh, I don't know if we're putting him in the best situation to throw him right back out there Monday, but something we'll talk about as a staff.